I don't even know if I'm actually live right now. It says live. But, and oh, it says one person is watching. Probably my mom. Hi, mom. Actually, it was Paul Lee. Close enough. We're still waiting for uh, Instagram to work to go live. I think it's it's working. It's turning. Hey everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Jordan said I'm not on Instagram. Am I on Instagram now? Oh boy. Sorry. Okay, how about now? Am I on Instagram now? Can someone do something to indicate that I am officially on? Okay, I am on. I'm on the gram. Here we are. Okay, it is an absolute miracle. Some people wonder if miracles happen. They do. That I was able to figure this out. So, confirmed miracle. I think you need three to be a saint. So, two more to go. My face is off center. It's just normally like that. How about... Is that, am I, am I in center? <laughs> I'm usually right of center. Um, okay, well, allow people to get on. Uh, does it, anyone have any questions before we get going on um, CF Goes Live in general? Maybe the passage uh, from yesterday. Um, any just updates on how things are going on? I'm seeing a lot of thumbs up. Good, thumbs up. And I'm seeing clappy hands. <laughs> um, so what we're going to do today is, you know, as as you guys know, at least I'm sure a lot of you know, that we're going through this book, uh, the New Life book, and we're going through the passages uh, for each day. So this is day three, so we're going through John 4. So if you have a Bible, um, turn to John 4. And I thought, something I've always wanted to do, but you know, you really can't do it uh, in a normal setting, uh, I wanted to do today. And what that is, is I want to bring you into a time where, okay, how do you spend time with God? How, how do you do it? I, I'm alone. I have my journal. I have my Bible. I have my coffee, whatever, whatever, whatever you have. How do you then just go about spending time with God. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a insight on what I'll do. I don't do this every single time, um, but it's something that has helped me um, spend quality time with God. And think of it like um, the structure I'm going to, to give you, think of it kind of like a drill, any sort of sport. Like let's say you play soccer and you dribble uh, through the, the cones no time in an actual soccer game do you find cones on the field. You know, no, uh, nobody's dribbling down the field and, oh, I have to weave through these cones and get by the defenders. The cones are meant uh, to be practice, so when you're in an actual game, you'll just do it naturally. Um, so what I found is having some structures that you implement in some of your times with God it will create a habit that the next time you you spend with God, they just come naturally. They just come naturally. 
Uh, another thing I'll say by way of caveat, it, the things I'm saying are not like, this is the way, you know. Um, it's based off of a little bit of research, but there, this isn't the only way. And I, I wouldn't claim to have the only way of, of spending time with God in his word. Especially, and I'm going to share some extremely practical things. Just overly practical. Um, and those are just things that I have found helpful myself as, as an individual. So don't take them and say, okay, that's, that's what you need to do um, in a practical sense. Okay, so are we ready? I feel like everybody is on. Um, four very practical things to start off. The first one is pick a location. Pick a location. So right now I'm in my home office. This is, I was about to say home away from home. That's not true. It's home inside my home. Um, that's, this is where I do a, a lot of work. And when I'm typically spending time with God, this is where it's at. It's, um, it's a great place. Now, should you spend time with God in a private place like, like this or in a public place like a coffee shop? There are pros and cons to both. When I was a student, I was all, uh, for my last few years of college, I was also an RA, and in my dorm room was a horrible place to spend time with God because people were always coming in and interrupting. So in that situation, I would usually go across the street. There used to be a Starbucks a across the street, and it typically wasn't very busy. That's why it went out of business. Um, but I would go over to that Starbucks, and put in my headphones so people wouldn't bother me, and that's where I'd spend time with God. The The principle is you want a place that will not be distracting. Uh, one, of, one of the pros about finding a place like, like this or a, um, a place where you're not around people is that you can start to pray the text out loud and people won't think you're crazy. Um, not that it's at the end of the world that people think you're you're crazy, but um, it is a huge pro to just be able to start praying what you're reading. Um, so first, pick a location. Second, um, eliminate distractions. Eliminate distractions. So the obvious one is to get rid of your phone. And I'm not saying throw it out the window. I'm saying put it in another room. So just through this door, there are stairs that go down, and I'll put it on kind of the ledge of a window. Um, or sometimes I'll put it in the back of my, in that, that shelving unit. It's actually a, a, one of those rolly things that you see in a library. Super nerdy, super cool. Um, but I'd put it back there just away. But I would highly recommend putting your phone in a different room. Uh, another way to, obviously you can't do that right now, so I understand. But after this, do that. Another thing you can do, here's a, is have some sort of like notepad and write down things that are distracting. So if you're like, oh yeah, I have that assignment that I need to turn in, write it down, put it to the side. So it's, you know it's somewhere, you're not gonna forget it, you wrote it down, but it's like, I'm not gonna deal with that right now. So you ha have something to write distracting thoughts out. Um, so, number two, eliminate distractions. Number three, trigger alertness. Trigger alertness. So for me, that usually means a cup of coffee. I'll meet with someone in the morning at Mars Cafe, and then I'll take a refill to go, and I'll walk back here with my refill, and I'll have a cup of coffee. Um, sometimes I'll light a candle. Um, I don't always do this, but sometimes I, I find it uh, increases my alertness if I light a candle. If my uh, office is a wreck, like um, one thing I wouldn't recommend is having your clothing closet in the home office, but I do, and sometimes there's a pile of clothes over there. Sometimes it's hard for me to distract, so I'll just quickly clean. Um, if you're like that, maybe that will help. Um, and then if you're someone like me and you need some glasses uh, in order to read, if you read without glasses for a long time, it gives you a headache, put on your glasses. 
Um, just a quick aside, if you want to know um, what it's like to be a parent, this is what it's like to be a parent. See, that that's, that's the damage is done. Um, so that's number three, trigger alertness. Whatever you know will help you. And this goes down to, like, this could apply to even just what you wear. If you find that you're more aware um, and more alert when you just change into your normal day clothes, change into your normal day clothes. Like, that, just small things to trigger to give God your, your best time. Not like you're performing for Him, but because you want to actually understand His Word and um, connect with Him. Uh, let's see, what number am I on? Uh, number four, uh, gather what I need. Gather what I need. So, typically, I'll have a pen. I'll have my... Bible, goatskin Bible, thank you to all the guys that, that gave it to me, and then I'll have a journal, and today, this will just be my journal, the, the New Life uh, book. So those are the, the four things. Pick a good location, eliminate distractions, trigger alertness, and um, gather what you need. Um, so... What I'm going to do now is just go through, okay, what is a good way of spending uh, time with God? Uh, again, we're going through the New Life series if, if people have just jumped on, and we're going through John 4. So um, before we even read the passage, what we want to do is to prepare ourselves, to prepare ourselves. And I have a little guide that I made. We'll post it somewhere. And when I say we because I will not post it, I'll... Uh, mess it up. Um, but a few uh, prayers of preparation and a few prayers of illumination. So preparation is just preparing your heart um, before God. And illumination is asking God to illuminate your mind, to help you understand. So, for example, here, here's a, on this piece of paper, here's a psalm um, that helps me prepare. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, and whose heart are the highways to Zion. Okay, so I'm, I'm reading this, um, helping remind myself of uh, the blessing that it is to be in God, and to have my strength in Him. And then here's a, a prayer of uh, illumination, uh, Psalm 43, send out your light and your truth let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Okay, so I'm asking for his light and his truth. I'm, I'm asking him to open up my mind to help me see uh, what is helpful. And here are just a few thoughts. I, I stole this from a syllabus um, uh, from uh, Tim Keller. But he, he just wrote out a few thoughts to think about before you spend time with God. Become aware of God's presence in the room. Um, God is always present everywhere. Um, that's like a part of his character and who he is. Um, but realize that he's actually here. He is actually in this room. So just take a, just take a few seconds. Pause. Stop looking at me. Look around in your room or wherever you're at, and realize that God is here. And just, um, just doing that helps so much. It helps so much for me of like, okay, God is present. He is here. He wants to connect with me. He wants to love me. He wants to illuminate my mind. He wants to lead me to obedience. God is here. here here's another thought, that knowing Him now is more important than anything else that might distract or concern me. So what is the most important thing that I could do right now? It's to know God and to connect with God. That helps completely throw whatever I'm worrying about that I've written down out the window of like, what, is, what was I created for? What is my purpose? It's to know, to know God. Here's another thought. Ask to attend to Him fully. You know, you're worried about all the busyness of that day. You just ask God, God, help me to attend to you fully. 
And so I already, I already said this, but write distracting thoughts on a notepad. You write them on the notepad. So all of these things are ways of preparing. Another thing I do, and this is like super crazy. I'm not saying you need to do this, but I bought an hourglass, okay? And just even, so I don't have my phone, even my watch can be distracting. So I just turn it, and then I know, okay, when it, like this is the amount of time that I have. It just, that's another thing I forgot I forgot to mention. So you're going through these things and you're preparing your heart to spend time with God, to read about, to pray to, to meditate on the creator of the universe. Okay, the next stage is actually reading. Reading. And here's the principle with reading. You're, you're first starting off to read to understand. You want to understand what the passage is actually saying. So you're asking questions of the passage. So I'm going to read the passage, and what I um, want you to do is I want you to stop looking at me. I know you need a break, okay? Stop looking at me, and we're going to read some of John 4. So we're going to read it together, and what I want you to do is to have your pen in hand, and you're going to underline two things. You're going to underline things that you have questions about that you want to understand more fully. Okay? So I'm going to read it. You're underlining things that you have questions about. Um, the second thing you're, un, uh, you're going to underline is you're going to underline things that you think would be good for you to meditate on. So that will be the third stage. Things that you really want to kind of seep into you. So you might understand it, but you know it's like medicine that you need to, um, to be a part of you. So I'm going to read it. You have your pen and mark it as we go. Another little thing is some people are really um, worried or dislike the idea of marking in a Bible. Okay? Um, and I... I would not worry about that. What is holy about the Bible is not the ink and is not the paper and is not the binding. What is holy about it are the actual words. If you throw ink at a canvas, there's nothing holy about it. It's just ink and a canvas. But if you, if you use that ink to write the very words of God on it, that is what's holy. The, word, the meanings of those words, that's what is special. So it's not like sacrilegious to mark it. In fact, if you um, if you found someone who had a letter from their wife or husband and it was worn and they had circled things and they had meditated on it, you wouldn't think, oh wow, they just really dishonor their spouse. You know, you think, oh, ah, uh, that's what you do. Ah, uh, you know, um, it would be something really um, special and unique. Okay, so I'm going to read the passage. You're underlining. Me too. Um, John 4. And I'm just going to read it from the, the New Life book so we're on the same translation. When Jesus learned the Pharisees had heard, he was making uh, and baptizing more disciples than John, though Jesus himself was not baptizing, but his disciples were. Okay. For me, I'm underlining that. Why was Jesus not baptizing, but only his disciples? Okay. Um, he left Judea and went again to Galilee. He had to travel through Samaria. So he came to a town of, the, of Samaria called Sychar. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Near the property that Jacob had given his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, worn out from his journey, sat down at the well. It was about noon. Now, another thing I'm, I'm making note of is it seems like there's a lot of detail about the certain place and time. A lot of detail, more than normal. Verse 7, a woman of Samaria came to draw water. Give me a drink, Jesus said to her, because his disciples had gone into town to buy food. Now is that, um, how is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me? A Samaritan, uh, a Samaritan woman, she asked him. 
for Jews to not associate with Samaritans. Sorry, I'm putting on nerd alert. Um, Jesus answered, If you knew the gift of God, and who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would ask him, and he would give you living water. Sir, said the woman, you don't even have a bucket, and a well, and the well is deep. So where do you get this living water? You aren't greater than our father Jacob, are you? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and livestock. Jesus said, Everyone who drinks from this water um, will get thirsty again, but whoever drinks from the water that I will give him will never get thirsty again. In fact, the water I will give uh, him will... <clears throat> become a well of water springing up in him for eternal life. Okay, I'm kind of just circling verse 13 as something that would be good for me to meditate on later. Verse 15, Sir, the woman said to him, um, Give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and come here to draw water. Go call your husband, he told her, and come back. I don't have a husband, she answered. You have correctly said, I don't have a husband, Jesus said, for you've had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have said is true. Sir, the woman replied, I see that you are a prophet. Our fathers um, worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews say that the place to worship is Jerusalem. Jesus told her, Believe me, woman, an hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know because salvation is from the Jews. Now, I'm underlining that. That's interesting. Um, but an hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Underlining that, that might be good to meditate on. Yes, the Father wants such people to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said to Him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When He comes, He will explain everything to us. Jesus told her, I, the one speaking to you, am He. Okay, so we read through it and just another thing if you have a hard time paying attention especially if you're just so tired one thing that will slow you down and help you concentrate is just reading it aloud okay some of you were were getting annoyed with me because i was well one i'm a slow reader and two you read a lot faster when you're not reading it aloud um but a way to increase your alertness and your un understanding is to start just reading it aloud so you can just hear the words in your ears okay so let's go back and first we're looking to understand um, um, what do I need to understand to understand the passage as Eric said yesterday it's good to imagine the situation you imagine the Samaritan woman you imagine Jesus uh, you imagine the well a hot noon day now, um, I'm not going to go through every detail of the passage. I'm just going to highlight a few things. So, I underlined, okay, though Jesus himself was not baptizing, but his disciples were. Now, I'm thinking, I'm trying to understand the passage here. This is the part where I'm just reading to understand. I'm asking the text questions. So, why do you think that Jesus didn't baptize anyone? I'm thinking through this. Okay, what are the possibilities? And the first thing that comes to mind is that Jesus didn't baptize anyone, because everyone would want to be baptized by Jesus. You know, one person comes and says, you know, I was baptized by Peter. And the other person says, so what? I was baptized by Jesus. You know, it'd be the ultimate Jesus juke in the first century. It's so he doesn't that, you know, I'm not saying that's the answer. It doesn't say that that's the answer, but I'm thinking through the text. Okay, why did Jesus not baptize anyone? And so on. Uh, the next thing that I underlined is all the details about Samaria and about Jacob's well and why he had to travel there and why he was at noon. Now, a lot of, I know the answer now because I've heard it taught and I've read about it. Um, but when I first read this, I, I had no idea. And then this is where it's helpful to have some guides 
um, to help you through some of the details of reading your Bible. So if you have an ESV study Bible, for example, I don't have a, a physical study Bible, but I have it on my phone, which is right there, so I can't look at it. Um, but I'll, I'll look it up on the ESV study Bible if I have um, my phone with me. Or I have my iPad, which isn't connected to internet, so if my phone typically is downstairs, I'll look at my iPad and I'll have the ESV study Bible on my iPad downloaded without internet connection. Um, or I have a, a, the MacArthur New Testament commentary, which is the MacArthur study Bible with just the notes. Okay, so and I'll look up what uh, John MacArthur said about this passage, which is usually really helpful. And in this passage, he notes how Samaria is where the Samaritans live. You know, that sounds about right. And in Samaria, the Jews would not travel through it. They would typically travel around it because they viewed the Samaritans as lesser people. They were half-breeds, people that were Jewish, that inbred with people um, that were in Israel but were not Jews, and they looked down at on them. And Jesus, he travels through Samaria. And then it says about noon. Why, why do we need to know the time? The time that Jesus went to the well? Well, it, it helps to know, and he points out, and the ESV study Bible also uh, points out, that at noon, people didn't go to the well because it was one of the hottest parts of the day. People would go in the morning. So this woman is going by herself to a well, which teaches us something. You know, it's, it's helping us understand the passage. And you keep on reading, um, and you realize, okay, this girl has a past. You know, she has some things that she's um, kind of a, a, ashamed of. And maybe, probably, that's why she's going at, at noon. So notice all of these things. Again, I'm not going to go into much more detail. All of these things are just looking at understanding the passage. What is it saying? I'm asking questions of it. And it is okay. I have, actually, I'm going to show you. Wait there. Okay, here it is. I probably just lost all of you. Um, so this Bible is the Bible that I used in college. And I, what I used to do is I would write questions in the margins of, the, of this Bible. And poor, poor Genesis, just, no, I'll just put, put it back in. Um, but what is so uh, encouraging to me is I'll look back at the questions that I wrote and a lot of them I'm like oh wow I like know the answer to that now it's okay to ask a question of a text and to have a while before you really know the answer it's okay write down the question either in your Bible or in your journal or to keep note of it like accumulate questions I don't get that like why is it like that um, and like make note of it and continue to think through it. Like not all things, you know, in our culture, everything is microwavable. Everything is instant and easy. The Bible and just God, knowing God is not like that. He is not like that. Um, it takes time. It takes prayer. It takes study. It takes discipline. So write down your questions, and sometimes you won't know in just one time with God uh, what the answer actually is. Okay, um, here, here are a few other questions that you can ask uh, the text. Is there an example for me to follow? This is from Martin Luther, by the way, so pay attention. It's from Martin Luther. Um, is there any command for me to obey? Is there any error for me to avoid? Is there any sin for me to forsake? Is there any promise for me to claim? Is there... A uh, new thought about God himself. Okay, so all of these things are just helping me think through the text. Okay, the next stage. So for those that just jumped on, 
we're going through, okay, how do you really spend good quality time with God? So we started with uh, preparing yourself for spending that time. And then we went into reading. And now the third stage is meditation. Meditation. So instead of asking the text questions, this is what you're doing. You're flipping it. You're allowing the text to ask you questions. You're allowing it to pierce you. Okay? So when I read this, <clears throat> there are two things, and I'm, I'm just going to just be very vulnerable about I'm I'm going to do it in real time, uh, at least attempt to. I, I read how she's obviously has a lot of baggage and a lot of sin. And because of that, it, it makes sense that she's going at a time to the well in which people would not see her and um, not uh, like judge her not and not look down on her. And I read that and I think of um, how easy it is for me to identify myself with my sin and to um, distance myself because of it. So for, for example, um, each week as college ministry directors, we have a time of, um, we have a time of uh, confession and accountability. And there are weeks I go in there, I'm like, oh, I don't, don't want to confess. I don't want to, you know, it's like, but it's like, I read this and I see what Jesus does. What Jesus does is he brings it to the light. He, he lovingly brings up what she is most ashamed of. So what would God want to do with me? Probably something very similar. So at this time in meditating through it, sometimes it's, it's good to have um, a journal. And I would write John 4, 18. Okay, and I'd write, I'm not going to do this in, in real time, just for the sake of time. Um, and I'd write out the verse. Again, it helps me slow down. I'm slowing down and I'm writing out the verse. And then I'm going to write out what is in my mind. What I'm, what I'm thinking through about that um, about that passage. Um, and I see a few questions out there. I'm going to get to that really good uh, question by Stephanie at, at the end. Um, so I'm, I'm writing it out in, in my, my journal to help me meditate on it. Another way of doing that is not just journaling, but it's starting to pray through the text. Um, a, a really good way of doing this, again, this isn't thus saith the Lord, but it's just a way, is going, praying through the text with acts, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. Adoration, confession, supp um, <laughs> thanksgiving, supplication. So I'm reading this and be like, okay, what can I adore God for in this passage? And what I see is Jesus has a way of never forsaking what is true, but always being immensely loving. And that is extremely convicting to me. And I can, I can just adore him for that. God, you are like that. You know, as Romans 11 says, um, the, uh, the goodness and severity of God. God is severe. He, he is the judge, but he's also so good at the same time. Uh, another thing that um, I, can, I can do is just confession, which I already mentioned, of just looking at how she hides her sin. I shouldn't do that. I look at Thanksgiving. Oh, God, you have now made a way for us to w worship in spirit and truth. And I pray prayers of Thanksgiving uh, for that. And then supplication um, could be a prayer of like, God, help me to be more like you. I want to be able to interact with people this way not in a way that looks down on people. It's very obvious he's very compassionate to, to her, but not in a way that also doesn't highlight sin. He, de he takes a highlighter and says, this, this is the issue. He does the same thing with Nicodemus. This is the issue. Help me to be like that. I'm not like that. So adoration, confession, thanksgiving, uh, supplication. Another question that helps me in meditation is this. Um, 
What would my life be like if this truth was explosively present in my life? If this truth was explosively present in my life, what would my life be like? All of these things, all of these different ways, and I have it on, on this sheet, and I'll sometimes just go through it, um, will um, help me just put the text deeper into my soul. He'll put the text okay, deep in, helping me to really not only understand it, but feel that it's true. And this is where the transition happens um, from meditation to prayer. From meditation to, uh, to prayer. Of, so you, you see how meditation is kind of like an in-between between reading and praying. And then prayer is just completely there. In, in praying to God. And what I'm wanting to do here is, have you ever been spending time with God and then it just hits? It's like R Romans 8. It says, His Spirit says, My Spirit, that I'm a child of God and my Spirit cries out, Abba, Father. It's like, it just hits you. I am a child of God. And, like, as I said before, God is always everywhere. But this is like, I can feel that he is actually here. Like he is actually with me. And I am his child and he loves me. And if, if that happens, when you're spending time with God, just stop. Stop. Don't, don't be like, need to check the next box. Meditation. You know, don't, don't do that. Just stop and be like, thank you, God. And just sit in it and meditate on his goodness and meditate on his grace and meditate on, you know, just um, kind of like when you're, in, when you're in love with someone, this is just so potent when you first get into a relationship and it's like just holding their hand is like the most exciting thing ever. And you could just, you're just content just being with somebody and looking into someone's eyes. The same thing with, God. just be content just being there. Um, and this connects with like spirit and truth. Like it's not just meditating on the truth. It's God's spirit just telling me, I, I am your father. Um, he, here's a little explanation. While reading is listening intently to God and meditation is intently speaking to your own heart. Um, this prayer is turning to God and speaking to him about what you're le learning and hearing. So you're, you're just now, you're just opening up your heart and just fully praying to God and allowing him to speak to you. Not in the same way as the Holy Spirit, or as the Holy Spirit speaks through the very Bible, the words of God in the, the scriptures, but to your soul, comforting you like a father comforts you. Now, a after this, the last thing you'll, you'll cap off with is kingdom prayer. And this is what people typically refer to as the prayer list, the people that you want to regularly pray for. And the reason why I think it's good to have all of these things together is this is a very common question. When I'm praying through a prayer list, how do I just not pray the same thing for people every time? Well, this is a way. Like you have, you've been praying through these things yourself and just pray those things for other people too. Um, but what this is doing is it's stoking the flames of your own affections towards God, which will automatically just lead you to stoke um, your affections towards other people and wanting to pray for other people or situations or whatever. Often what we do is we'll do it exactly the opposite. We'll, we'll pray and then we'll spend time with God. I would recommend switching it, switching it. So I'm going to end here. I'm not sure. I probably went too long, but... I'm going to end with a prayer um, by A.W. Tozer. Um, and again, I know you need a break. Don't look at me. Actually pray this prayer. So I'm going to read it and we'll pray it um, together. You ready? Okay. Oh God, I have tasted thy goodness and it has both satisfied me and made me thirsty for more. 
I am painfully conscious of my need of further grace. I am ashamed of my lack of desire. O oh God, the triune God, I want to want thee. I long to be filled with longing. I thirst to be made more thirsty still. Show me thy glory, I pray thee, that so I may know thee indeed. Begin in, mer uh, in mercy a new work of love within me. Say to my soul, rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. Then give me grace to rise and follow thee up from this misty lowland where I have wandered so long. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, guys. Have a good day. Now, oh, forgot. Now what I'd recommend is going and doing the same thing just in your own individual time. It can be on John 4. It could be your regular reading plan. Whatever it is, just um, try to go about the same process. Put your phone away. Get a good hour with God. And I really think you'll, you'll change your life.